Hi students, I thought I'd give you uh, just a little background in library history as well as uh, some important documents that you'll need to know about in the profession. So let's take a look back at a little school library history. I love these old posters and maybe you can use those in your library. The link is there if you like. Um, and it, a quote interested me, one that I found um, a long time ago and it's also included in your textbook. Mary E. Hall was only the second person appointed as a high school librarian in the United States. And her description of the high school library just reminds me so much of what mine looked like. To realize what we mean by a modern high school library, one must actually see it in action. Even the high school librarian who spends her days, her days year in and year out in the library feels each day the fascination and wonder of it all. To have as your visitors each day from five to seven hundred boys and girls of all nationalities and all stations of life, to see them come eagerly crowding in one hundred and more every forty minutes, and to realize that for four of the most important years of their lives, it is the opportunity of the library to have a real and lasting influence upon each individual boy and girl, gives the librarian a feeling that her calling is one of high privilege and great responsibility. Wow, doesn't that describe a good situation uh, and, and one um, that many of us have experienced, I hope, and will experience? In fact, back in 1915, as I said, Mary was one of very few, maybe two librarians. And at that point, schools had book rooms and, and libraries that really didn't have librarians. Um, although teachers who were getting stability in, in terms of grade level and subject areas uh, were building classroom collections. Um, so we didn't have very many librarians. Um, we didn't have library standards either. Um, the first that I know about happened in um, 1945, was published by ALA's Committee on Postwar Planning, and it links school library effectiveness to the size of its book collections and frequency of classroom teachers' use. The school librarian was beginning to be seen as an instructional leader for the mental, emotional, and social growth of young people. As we move into the 19, into 1960, we see um, AASL standards for school library programs. It's the first of our modern group of standards, and it specified collaborative leadership responsibilities. And this may have been inspired by the impact of Sputnik, um, the Cold War, uh, the race to space, and our new interest in really ensuring that our students were capable in learning in, in learning math and science and languages. And then um, 1969 um, brought us a focus on media. Um, the ASL and the Department of Audiovisual Instruction brought us the standards for school media programs. Um, also, out of that emerged the term School Library Media Specialist and School Library Media Center. Again, there was a focus on leadership and also public relations and administrative ability. The document proposed that the standards be revised every couple of years. Uh, in 1975, uh, with collaboration from the Education, Communications, and Technology Organization, we see a critical shift, and the school library is now an integral part of the total instructional program of the school, which focuses on librarians, school librarians as teachers. And then this was the first year I entered the school library part of our profession, and I encountered information power. And here we have that mission that we see resonates in, in the documents to come. The mission of the School Library Media Program is to ensure that students and staff are effective users and, of ideas and information. And it talks about how that mission is accomplished by providing physical access, instruction, and working with other, uh, other educators to design learning strategies, the collaboration part of it. And so the three roles were established, information consultant, instructional consultant, and teacher. In 1998, 10 years later, uh, we see a focus on new information power with a focus on partnerships and an introduction of nine information literacy standards in three categories, information literacy, independent learning, and social responsibility. 
and then we hit empowering learners and I'm going to skip to the next slide to show you the cover this is AASL's learning standards for 2007 and it calls on the school librarian to function as an educational leader and suggest that the learning standards shape the library program as a tool for school librarians to shape the learning of students in the entire school. And this document um, has spawned a number of other documents based on these learning standards, including the uh, standards in action. In the mission statement here, we see the um, same mission that was introduced back in 1988 the mission of the school library uh, media program is to ensure that students and staff are effective users of ideas and information. And the school library media specialist empowers students to be critical thinkers, enthusiastic readers, and skillful researchers um, in the ways uh, that are um, listed below. Um, to summarize the standards, um, there are four basic areas, uh, and you'll need to know these pretty well. Um, the areas are inquire, think criti critically and gain information, draw conclusions, make informed decisions, apply knowledge to new situations and create new knowledge, share knowledge and participate ethically and productively as members of our democratic society, and pursue personal and aesthetic growth. And each of these standards is divided into the strategies by which we teach them skills, dispositions and actions, responsibilities, and self-assessment strategies. The standards also came with a set of common beliefs. These are kind of overarching across the standards, and um, you should really know about these. They, they cover, of course, reading and inquiry and ethical behavior, technology skills, equitable access, information literacy, thinking skills, the social context, and the essential um, aspect of, of school librarians in, in the learning community. These are really important. These are your philosophical groundings, and so you should know about them. A little while back, my students put together, and my student teacher put together this poster. And the, um, it's important also to know that the stand standards have been summarized by these four words, think, create, share, grow. And I, I challenge you, um, come up with a poster like that to inspire your own learners in your own library. This one uh, was, used, was created using Comic Life. After the standards came this document, Empower, Empowering Learners. When the standards dealt with learners, this, this deals with standards for school library programs. Um, in the book, there was um, a report of the, there was a leadership summit and there was also a phone and email survey where teacher librarians were asked which of their roles were the most important and, and has there been a shift and you can see that there was a shift uh, from teacher as a number one rank in, in um, the old role. Uh, teacher librarians see themselves, number one, as an informational partner, instructional partner, sorry, number two as an information specialist, number three as a teacher, and number four as a program administrator. It's important to know that there are now not four but five roles, and um, the document specifies uh, that leader is another one of those roles. Leadership is connected to professional commitment, your knowledge and challenges of opportunities facing our profession. Um, it's important that you think of yourself as a leader. Your role as an instructional partner is the part of it that um, asks you to collaborate with classroom teachers on assignments, um, critical thinking, tech skills, social and cultural competencies, your role in your role as an information specialist, you introduce and model emerging information and communication technologies, evaluating those technologies, and considering ethical use of information, things like fair use, creative commons, etc. In your role as a teacher, you empower students to become critical thinkers, enthusiastic readers, skillful researchers, ethical users of information, and advocates for reading in all formats. In your role as program administrator, you ensure that all members of the learning community have access to resources that meet a variety of needs and interests. 
You develop the mission, the strategic plan, policies, you manage the staff and budget, you manage the physical and virtual spaces, you have partnerships with a variety of stakeholders, and you address broader educational issues with the educators in your building, with um, your colleagues in the district, and also at the professional association level and beyond that as you network at the global level. In 2014, AASL um, enacted a new mission statement, which I think is brilliant. The American Association of School Librarians empowers leaders to transform teaching and learning. This clearly positions uh, us as change agents, as transformational leaders, um, and it clearly identifies our focus as teachers people who impact teaching and learning in our schools and districts. Um, you can point to this, you can needlepoint it. Um, I think it's really important um, and it frames us in terms of really future thinking. We'll be talking about leadership this week and over the next few weeks and probably throughout the course. If I explain nothing else to you that's important this semester, I want to make sure that you leave this course believing in your potential to lead learning in your school and your district. The National School Library Standards for Learners, School Librarians, and School Libraries was officially released in November 2017 at the National Conference in Phoenix. Uh, this will be the text, of course, uh, one of our texts for our class, and we're introducing it this week, but we'll take a much deeper dive into it over the coming weeks. And this is the framework for learners, and you'll see the framework for libraries, and you'll also see this framework for li librarians um, in our book. Um, but also, we need to be very concerned with the International Society for Technology in Education and their standards. Um, and we are at this point considered um, one of the largest groups that attends ISTE, and we have one of the most active um, networks or special interest groups. Uh, so take a look at these. Be familiar with these because these will probably be important to your administrators. There's a, a, a group of standards for teacher leaders. There is a group of standards for educators and also for working with computer science educators as well as technology coaches. In my mind, we fill a lot of these roles as well, uh, but your other uh, partners in the school program will be interested in NISTE standards and we'll talk a little bit more about how, <coughs> how we connect with them. So ISTE standards, um, there's some wonderful, uh, if you're not up to speed with the standards for students, there's a great vocabulary um, wrap on what they mean, and there's a very cool um, infographic, and you can bust this open to see the indicators under all of these areas, and you will see real resonance between the ISTE standards for learners and for teachers and our own AASL standards. And this is um, the ISTE standards for educators. Again, um, another infographic, uh, the standards themselves and the indicators that can be exploded. Um, so in our, within ISTE, we also have our own network. And I just want you to be aware of this very active group that I mentioned earlier. To follow them on Twitter, you're going to follow the hashtag ISTE LIB, L-I-B. Uh, you may want to check out the new future, I'm sorry, ISTE uh, Librarians page, which includes the future ready crosswalk. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and it, it promises to refresh itself with new materials of interest to school librarians. Speaking of future ready, be familiar with this. We'll dig a little bit deeper into all of these things during the week that we look at instruction. Um, and also during curation and some of the others. But this is a poster that you can download. Um, in 2018, the Future Ready Librarians Framework work updated to change, to have learner centered in the center and to have literacy be applied throughout. And that's a very important change. If your school or your district has signed the Future Ready Pledge, this is not in library language. This is in the language of your administrators and in the language of the whole school. 
So when you get involved in helping your school achieve the Future Ready Pledge, and there are specific um, expectations of many of the players within the school, then you really are part of a team working to make your school agile and aware of um, the, the factors that are coming down the road. So this is a very important um, document and I was really pleased to help develop it at the beginning. Uh, so find out if the school that you're working in is a future ready school and you could also um, possibly lead the movement later on if, it, if you find yourself in a school that is not aware of it. So we'll, we'll dig deeper as I mentioned into that. These are just some more materials uh, from Future Ready. There's wonderful webinars. I've participated in a few of them, uh, and it's really worth a visit to the Future Ready Librarians page, as well as the Facebook group and the hashtag Future Ready LIBS, Future Ready Libs. Um, how do you get from one side of the street to the other? You usually follow a crosswalk, and a crosswalk is, in educational parlance, the link between one set of standards and another. In other words, where are there similarities? Where is there alignment? And this is a um, future-ready ISTE uh, learner standards. Um, actually, it's ISTE Ready Educator Standards Crosswalk, and you'll see the, the, the alignment between Future Ready Librarians and the educators. It's an important step. We're looking forward to seeing um, the AASL standards crosswalks as well, and I'll be sharing them with you when we work on instruction as well. In addition to the K-12 standards, it's really important that we take a look at what's expected of our students when they reach the university. And one of my favorite sets of standards is the ACRL frames. I love the nuance. I love pretty much that it aligns and is uh, with, with our own standards and it's very clear. I suspect we'll see a crosswalk for that as well. Uh, but I hope that you will get a chance to take a look at these. And um, there are a lot of materials that are developing that re relate to instruction in terms of research's inquiry, authority is constructed and contextual, especially at the high school level. You need to be aware of the ACRL information literacy framework. Let's close this conversation with just um, a reminder that there are so many resources out there that are provided by our National Association. Um, for one, uh, you'll be visiting the National Standards Portal, um, standards.aasl.org, frequently during this course. And in that little box on materials, you just get a peek at some of the um, truly helpful resources that you'll find gathered on the portal. In addition, the AASL website also lists the number of the toolkits and portals. Um, and if you're a member, and you should be if you've bought the textbook, um, at least for this year, and I hope you continue, you'll find information about upcoming conferences. Um, you'll find um, materials on the awards and publications. And among the publications that are there, um, you'll notice our, the journal of our association, which is called Knowledge Quest. It's available as a print subscription, and parts of it are available um, online, um, free of charge. Um, if you are a member, you get in um, without um, charge, of course, because it's part of your membership. Uh, in addition, uh, there is the Knowledge Quest blog. There's the Knowledge Quest, Quest Journal as well as the Knowledge Quest blog, and the blog is a group blog. Um, it's excellent. You can see a list of the topics covered. A couple of our former students from Rutgers are now bloggers for Knowledge Quest. It's comprehensive. It covers grade levels, and I think it's a great starting point to kind of uh, take uh, get a good lens on what's going on in the profession. Another one of the resources on the ASL um, standards portal, as well as the website, is the Best Digital Tools collection. It used to be made of best apps and best websites. I've served on those committees and love that service. I hope you get to do that someday yourselves. 
Uh, but not only will you get this year's picks for best digital tools, but there is a great archive of some of the classic digital tools out there. And I know you're going to enjoy scanning that. And so this is not the end of standards. It's not the end of crosswalks. I just wanted to make you aware of the standards framework, frameworks and upcoming crosswalks that you'll need to be aware of as you begin your field experience. And we'll dig in much more deeply later.